Would you take on a job where the customer is drilled through the main wiring loom of the car, a mobile mechanic's come out, taken the car away, chopped it all out, repaired all the wiring, and not been able to finish the job? No? Well, we have. I don't know why. My biggest thing is turning cars away. You'll make more money turning them away than you ever will fixing them. So, let's get into this one. I'll explain what's happening. So, we've got Peugeot 206. Lovely old car, 50 odd thousand miles, nice thing. We've actually done a few of these in the past. What they do, where the main loom goes into the car, it's got a nice massive round grommet with only about an inch worth of wiring going through it and it's all molded. And they think they're gonna run an amplifier wire through there. And this is the type of car where people are starting to modify them a bit now. They drill through the drill through the main grommet, but the wiring behind it actually turns and it drills straight through. Not only did they drill through it, they used a flat like wood bit, which literally chomped all the wiring about. So he didn't know where to go to. He's found a mobile mechanic. He's come out, had a look at it, said, no, I need to take it away. He's taken it away. He's done loads of repairs on it. We haven't had a look at that yet, but we are going to have a look at it. Um, and now the wipers don't work. Apparently that's all what's not working. So he's got most of the way there. Fair play to him. The customer's asked us if we can check all the repairs, what the other place has done. I've sort of refused that. I've told the customer that I will have a look at it. If I see anything dangerous, I'll advise it. That's it. I'm not checking over somebody else's work. So I carry the blame. If I charge... 50 pounds to have a look over that wire and go, yeah, it's all good. That takes the warranty off the other person, surely. You know, if if he's charged 500 pounds to do this, but I've checked it and said it's okay, then responsibility is on me. So yeah, not for me. Like I say, I'll tell him if there's something bad in there, but all we're gonna do is check the fault, what it's coming for, a wiper fault, and we'll have a look at that. So these aren't the most complicated cars. Um, fairly, for the year of them, actually, 2004. Four-ish, I would think it is, um, but they are still semi-wired um, and things like that. So what you've got is you've got a comm unit, which is your stalks. That is a computer on its own. You can talk to that with a scan tool. That then talks to the body control module, BSI. That then talks, and they're both talking through CAN connections. So that computer talks to that computer. The BSI then tells the underbonnet fuse box where to put the powers to, to go out to the wipers. So that's where we're up to. Up till now, the customer, they've fitted a new set of stalks. They're not programmed. The BSI is programmed. They haven't changed that. Um, they've changed the underbonnet fuse box and they've changed the wipers or wiper motor. So yeah, that's sort of where we're up to now. Um, so the first thing I've done, I've checked, have we got washers? We do now. If that is telling the BSI to squirt the washers, that is when it should activate the wipers as well. So we know that something's happening, it's talking to the comm unit to a degree. Um, got to click one, there's nothing. Click two, high speed, there is actually a, a click from under the bonnet. So the relay is turning on. So the high speed relay is turning on, why is it not turning on to high speed? Don't know. First click's not working, second one is. Let's give it a scan, I think. Give it a scan, see what's talking to what, what's receiving signals, and then we might be able to work out roughly what's going on. So let's get the scan tool on it. So although we're pretty sure it's gonna be between the BSI and the underbody fuse box, we do wanna start at the beginning, make sure, especially where they've changed everything, they've changed the comm unit, if they've gone for a slightly different year one, who knows? So yeah, let's start from the beginning, see if the switch is working, see if it's talking to the BSI. So we're into the live data at the moment. And as you can see, windscreen wiper control, not valid when it's off. Automatic or intermittent, that's fair enough. Next one up, low speed. So that should have clicked a relay on to flick the low speed on. And then we're up to high speed. And that is where I hear it click. So maybe it's just a low speed is not talking. Right, so next thing, BSI. Let's have a look in there. So I've got a BSI, read data stream, down to visibility, select all. Uh, where are we? Okay, windscreen, low speed control, inactive. Yep, inactive, goes active, low speed, active. 
So we are getting a signal from the comm unit down to the BSI. BSI would then talk to the underbody fuse box, which we know it's talking to on high speed because it's clicking the relay over. So uh, I don't know if we can talk to under bonnet fuse box on this. Some of them you can. Um, da, da, da. Don't think. Some of them did. No, so it doesn't look like you can talk on the Think Car. I think you can on Peugeot Planet, the old one. So all we know is switch is working. It's telling the BSI what to do on both low speed and high speed, and it is squirting the watchers. So let's work out what's going on. Let's go and look at the diagram, see how this system works, what talks to what, and what makes the relays click on and off. Let's get the diagram up, have a look at that. Once again, we don't know the quality of the parts, what they've fitted on this car. Wiper motor and an underbonnet fuse box. Could they have the same fault as the ones what they've actually taken out? We don't know. They're going to be using second-hand parts on an older vehicle, you know. Them parts are going to be old as well. So we do need to start checking why we got volt where we got voltages, what controls we've got up to the underbonnet fuse box. We know that the high speed relay is clicking on. Is it lost power to that relay? And that's why it's not putting the high speed wipers on. Who knows? So this is what we found, and this is where we're going to go next. Okay, we have got wiper motor down here. Literally just has an earth to the motor. Then it has two controls, high speed, low speed or vice versa, and it's got a trigger back to say when it's at park position. That trigger goes straight back up that wire, up to the BSI unit. So that tells the BSI when it's at park position, and that will turn off the relay, which is, try, which is putting power to the motor to get it to its park position. So that's one wire. The other two controls or powers Linked to these two relays, we have got a 30 amp fuse going into the first relay for the power supply to the motor. Now, so this first relay is powered one from the actual underbonnet fuse box computer, which gives one side of the coil. The other side of the coil goes down and back to the BSI. That's going to turn on the first click. BSI controls this first relay, clicks the power over, then it goes from few 17 over to this crossover relay. That is the relay which says high speed or low speed. Both them controls come out. If it's on low speed or high speed, whichever one it is, it's pin nine on plug A, which is a green one, and then out again on plug A, pin one, again, green plug. So if this one's not turning on, it doesn't give power to the second relay. So this is a high speed relay we can hear clicking over. It's only a changeover relay. It's not a power control relay. So what we need to do, first thing, let's check we've got voltage on this fuse. Make sure that's okay. If we have got voltage on that fuse, are we getting outputs on pin one and pin nine? Is the problem down at the motor? We don't know yet. So we're suspecting it's between the two, but again, we're not sure. Let's check out what we've got on pin one, pin nine, a few 17. Okay, we have got, I've got the ignition on, got the wipers turned on, so we're going to check pin one and pin nine. They are both the top connectors in this green plug, and they've both got an earth path. So that should have power going to it. Just check pin few 17. That's got voltage, okay. Right, let's just flickly, quickly turn it on to the high speed because that is flicking that relay over. But obviously we know that the wipers aren't working. Let's see if we get any voltage out of them. All right, let's just go up to high speed. Let's click the relay on. Right, has anything changed on that? No. Okay, so we know these are the two wires. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the plug. The wiper motor has got its own earth to it. So if I power this up and we've still got an earth path, which we do have on, on both. Yep. Let's see. Let's just make sure the motor itself is working and we're getting a good continuity through there. Maybe if this is shorted, 
This will notice the short and turn itself off. I don't know. Ah, okay. That's low speed. Let's turn that beep off. Oh, that's low speed. The only thing we don't know about, I don't think it will make any difference, is the signal back to tell the wipers that they're parked. But we're not too worried about that. Right, so all we know is the low speed is not giving the voltage out to the high speed relay. So when that flick over relay is working, although it's clicking over, it's not got the power going to it. So we need to look at the control for that first relay where it comes from, what it's doing. Okay, so recap. These two coming out, one in nine, we disconnect the plug, power them up, they're both working. So we can eliminate all that side of it from this circuit. This one, the high speed or the, the changeover relay are both controlled, the in and the out of the coil both go to this computer side. So the van signal, which is vehicle area network, not control area network, is talking between the BSI and the body control. But that doesn't work on the low speed or this, that must be, the, we'll call that the power relay to the changeover relay. So the control relay gets its own switch down from pin C on plug five. Plug C, or pin five on plug C, Plug C is a 40, 40 pin black plug on the BSI. So we're gonna to go to that, see what readings we've got here. Well, in fact, no, we're gonna to go to here, see what we've got, see if we've got a control to there. And if not, we'll go back to there. So let's go and check here. And if we, whatever reading we've got there, we should have there. So let's have a look. Okay, so pin four, control relay, control to that relay inside. Okay, so we've got 11.8 volts. That sort of makes sense. We're going to get voltage from the sort of computer inside here through the relay and then back out and it's waiting for this to be earthed. So 11.8 volts. What we need to do now is go back down to the black plug, 40 pin, check if we're getting the same reading, 11.3, down at that end. On second thoughts, when we check the BSI, we're going to be unplugging that black plug so we might lose the voltage of 11.3 down that end. So what we'll do, we'll find out what's on pin five and we'll do a continuity test between the two. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna unplug the one from under the bonnet, get to the plug down here, go to pin 20, and then we'll do a check and see if we, that wire is actually connected together or where the loom's been chopped, have they managed to swap two wires around. And the other thing with Peugeot's, it can come out, of one wire because they're numbered wires, they're not actually color coded. It can come out as a green, go through a multi-plug, then change color. So it can't even be, we can't 100% say purple to purple because we know it's got purple down that end. But let's have a look, see what we find. Okay, so we're looking for pin five on this black plug. So we've checked on the back here. It literally starts from that side, one, two, three, four, five. So we're pulling this plug out and we can go straight onto the connection there. And funny enough, number five, one, two, three, four, is there. Right, that's showing up as earth, but the other end is disconnected. So either, I haven't checked it since I disconnected it, but that's an earth. Let's go and check what we've got the other end. Back up this end onto this purple, it's dead, nothing. So, if that's got a full earth and this one's got nothing, it's definitely not connected. So now we're gonna to have to go down to where they've gone into there. Luckily, they're both purple wires. And again, with these, because you don't get any um, sort of number or you don't get any indication of which ones they are, there's multiple whites, greens, purples, etc. So we're gonna go down there, try and find the purple, which has been sort of repaired. And one of them is gonna have an earth path on it. One of them is gonna have a continuity up to here and then we'll be able to work out what it is. Definitely be able to get that one working in, hopefully, when we put the other one back together. But he said there's nothing else faulty on it, as far as he knows. So all we can do is strip that out, have a look, and I'll show you under the glove box. Right, you're gonna like this. Let's show you what we found. So we pulled the glove box out. We had a quick look around here. 
worked out which wire goes which way and all that. And we pulled the glove box out. And to be honest with you, yeah, this lot was all bundled up in there. So the wiring is too long, so they doubled it up. But all the solder joints are nice, you know, and he's just run three different colored wires, backwards and forwards, copper's copper. It doesn't matter about colors, it really don't, you know. So as long as one goes to the other, problem is we have got five or six different purples in here and they've got numbers that they'll run one number down, but they'll run a different number a bit further up. So that's where it's become a pain. Um, but we have found that it's this wire coming into the car and it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's that wire going back into the BSI. So it's not too much of a problem connecting that side back up. That's going to bring the wipers back on, which I will do and I'll show you it. The problem is, what happens if he's got two or three around the wrong way? You know, if I join the, the two what are wrong around the other way, there could be something major going on. It could have voltage coming down and it send it back to the BSI or something like that. I don't know. So I'm going to swap the wires, which I know where they go because I can prove where they go. And then I'm going to insulate the other two because if they're not correct at the moment doing what they're meant to be doing, maybe they're not used. And if they are used, I don't know. So, yeah. Bit of a weird one. So I'm going to get the wipers working. I'm going to speak to the customer, see if he wants me to trace through where them wires go to. What does he want to take back to the person who done it? Or, or what does he want to do? So, right, let's swap them wires over, show you the wipers working. I'll see you in a minute. He's a genius. I mean, it's, it's basic wiring. Peugeot wiring at that. There we go. Low speed, high speed, parks. Does everything. When you wash it, put do a couple of sweeps. Jobs a carrot. But now I've got two wires, I don't know where they go. So we had two lots of wires. We knew these ones ran the wrong way. Where do them two go? I speak to the customer again. When somebody's chopped the whole loom in half, I can't take responsibility for it. I have fixed the fault which he's come in for. And the rest of it is how the other fella done it. You know, if he's happy to run around with it like that or wants to go take it back to the other fella, have it checked or do what he wants to do, that's up to him. I'm not taking responsibility for it. My one wire, I know is right. Anything past that. But again, I mean, we all know the blame game, don't we? In, in this, you fit a tyre, now my daughter's pregnant. You know, you're going to get the blame for it. So should I have taken it on? Yeah. Yeah. As long as I'm up front, I was up front with him before he come in. He'll have it on his invoice. We've fixed the one wire, found the one wire. Must does need further investigation. And uh, yeah, there we go. So thanks very much for watching. Like, subscribe, stick the old notification bell up if you do want to see more of this. And we'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.